All right, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> Who else? Are we going to have a meeting today? I guess is the question. Let's see. Hey, dude. And hey, Steve. How you doing? I'm um, doing well. How are you? I am good. Trying to wrap up the end of the year, so I'll put the I understand. Link to hack for the notes, but I'm not sure. We can talk about whatever you want. I can talk about what, what I was just mentioning on the Slack channel. Um, doesn't look like we have a lot of attendees, probably because I did not get an agenda out, and I'm guessing people are starting to wind down. Yeah, it's uh, it's the start of vacation season, I guess. Yeah. And as much as people can't go anywhere. I, you know, I, I'm just going to walk around my yard and go around the, the neighborhood. I'm just, uh, I really, you, just you got to take a mental break. We actually a friend of ours um, has a house up on the beach and she just says like rotates anybody that can take it just for them. And she's got all these rules about cleaning up after you leave kind of thing. So um, it's getting out and doing something. Yeah, it's important to get out. All right. Uh, we can do a rough Q and A if people want to discuss in such a small group. Um, the work that I've got that I was going to present is really just kind of work in flight that is not directly, it's enabling for notary, but it's not a notary. It's, it's an underlying infrastructure to make notary work in registries. So I'm not sure what people are interested in discussing. Let me just pull up that. What is it that you guys are working on that you're interested in notary, I guess would be the question. So that's, uh, I'd mentioned, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out exactly. I'm, uh, I'm a maintainer in, uh, in build tax program. So it, this had been like discussed for a while, I think particularly on like the VMware side, uh, there's like a strong interest in having some notary. And then we were very excited to hear about uh, notary v2, not requiring a new, uh, you know, a new server, et cetera. Um, so uh, I'm just trying to sign in so I can list myself on the thing. I, uh, you shouldn't um, have to sign it. It should be anonymous. Is oh. that the case? I think I had to, but it's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, no, okay. It, it, you can sign it, but you're not required. That's what it is. I didn't see that. Okay. Um, um, yeah, but, you know, uh, I just wanted to, uh, I'm not going to be able to, you know, come necessarily too often. I just wanted to pop in from time to time, introduce myself and kind of see what the community is up to. Yeah, we've been trying to be good about the recordings too, because we recognize that we've had struggle with time zones also. Uh, so we try to use the recordings to get people uh, a chance to get on. Yeah, I actually, I appreciate the time, the, the switch because I'm, I'm in Israel. So this is 7 p.m., which is better than 8 p.m., um, which is what it was previously. <laughs> Does Israel so, have time zone, the daylight savings times kind of things? Yes. Okay. And they're probably not, I actually did a time zone time feature years ago. And I was amazed at not only do different countries do daylight saving times at different times during the year, but it has changed over the decades. So if you wanted yeah. to- Yeah, it's all changed like five years ago. 
and, and right. the US has changed and, and Europe has changed. So if you try to store something in a database and you want to reference a time, you know, over some period of time, you have to make all of these adaptations based on all these rules. So it wasn't as simple as just doing math. We actually had a lookup database that you had to go and look up to do the conversion on and, and a team in place to be able to maintain this as geopolitical things change time zones. Uh, it, it was pretty amazing feature work. Yes. That's why I, uh, I guess, import time zone libraries and I don't do it myself. There you go. So yeah. Andy, what is it that you're doing? Yeah, I'm actually, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. No, it's, okay. Yeah, so I'm actually on Niaz's team um, at AWS. So just sitting in, uh, learning a little bit. I'm going to have to eventually work with this and code some stuff up against it. So uh, trying to learn a little bit as it gets developed and uh, keep myself informed. Gotcha. Yeah, so Niaz, our agenda for today kind of fell apart. Niaz was not feeling well, so he asked to, and it was a migraine, so it's probably even more to have a box yelling at him. It's probably not the best. So um, he'll have work that he'll post online, I think is what he was saying. Um, what was it you would like, and, and Maria? What, what was it like, we, Maria and I know each other. Is there anything that people would like to talk about today? I could, we could make it more open and free form. Um, I don't have anything particular today. I was just gonna check in, see how everything's doing, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I also didn't. I, you know, I watched the the presentation at QCon, and I I think I'd seen another presentation you did a bit ago. So I just you know, wanted to stay up to date on this. Okay. I mean, mostly. Uh, so the like I said, the work we've been trying to do. We've got the prototype um, in a place where we want to do more end to end. And I was just, uh, in fact, I think I just saw Gareth or Rita respond. Um, so if let me pull up. Uh, I can just share my screen. It's probably the easiest way to do this. Go share the right screen. Hold on. Uh, screen share. There we go. So we've been. Um, you know, working on this, you know, it's end to end experience where a company, Wabbit Networks, is developing software. They have a, a registry where they sign their content, they publish it to a public registry. If you want to pull it from the public registry based on that, that's fine. Um, you know, so Wabbit Acme Rockets doesn't trust Wabbit Networks, but they trust Docker Hub. So Docker puts the second signature and then Acme puts their signature as they move it into their registry for their validation. So we feel pretty good about these overall. Um, the things that we, this is, you know, conceptual we know to do here, but that's always the, the challenge is conceptually, we know a lot of these different things. It's putting it into practice. Uh, and if you remember one of the, I think the KubeCon talk we did at the beginning of the pandemic, um, uh, Justin and I were joking about, uh, we did a blueprint for a bathroom and we're ready to go build it. And we're all ready to have contractors show up and we kind of had one more sketch just before we did it. And his joking comment was, where's the bidet? Um, you know, so it's not, where'd my screen go? Uh, you know, from a US perspective, you know, pre-COVID, pre-lack of toilet paper, we didn't really worry about bidets, but now we have a better perspective on that. So the, it's all a matter of like, it's great in theory until you start putting it into, into practice and then you start to find all the rough edges. So I've been working with the uh, OPA folks, the open policy agent, to see if they could implement uh, the Notary V2 you know, prototype to see if this would work, right? Put the, put the car on the track, see if it actually does what we think it's gonna be. So uh, that's kind of the next step is what we wanna do from a validation perspective is see, um, does this flow as we're thinking work? We know it's very minimalistic. We don't even think it's minimally viable yet. Uh, but what are the things that make it more viable? One of which obviously has been, uh, how do you get the key on the ephemeral client? Um, so that's part of what Niaz has been doing in the key management with uh, Ian and some others and trying to figure out what is the right experience there. Uh, so we'll, we'll hopefully make some more progress. I, I'm hopeful we'll get something because uh, over the holidays, some people really like to, even under normal circumstances, like to do work over the holidays on this stuff. Um, so we'll see if anybody's signed up to do that. 
I really wanted to have the OPA folks work on this because they are the experts. They are the ones driving the project. It could be OPA contributors. I don't really care who, but I really wanted to have somebody in the OPA community working on this so that they could say, hey, here's, here's what works today. Here's what doesn't work, but here's this thing we were thinking about anyway, because they're you know kind of in that incubation phase as well. Um, so we'll hopefully get some progress going there. Uh, at the same token, the other thing that we've been working on is the, the whole idea here is that these are three different registries and possibly three different clouds that have been run here. So obviously there needs to be a solid standard that this stuff can move between these different registries and projects, if you will. So there is some work that we've been, uh, the other work I've been doing is what are the changes needed to distribution to be able to support this? And uh, I'll go through this relatively quick. Oh, hey, Ian. Um, Can I just cut in for a question? Yeah, yeah. Uh, particular, I guess, um, the assumption with the keys is that they'd be kind of a standalone OCI artifact or that they would be um, pieces of metadata that are attached to the image, to the, you know, the actual image that you'd be signing. Right. Um, and you're saying, key. or is it like part of, right. It, or signature, et cetera. It, or would it be, you know, based on, I don't know, Docker manifest or something like how it. Gotcha. Yeah. So those, those are important and they come and get interchangeable sometimes. So we actually are storing signatures in the registry as an OCI artifact is the, is the goal. The key, a separate OCI artifact, okay. Yes, and that's all, and, and what's really important about that is if you notice, we're doing additive signatures here. So Web Networks might have you know, been able to stuff this, the key, the signature, sorry, not the key, the signature right in the manifest because they originated it and that'll be fine. But the problem is, is that if I reference this artifact uh, here with a digest or a tag, when Docker Hub wants to add a signature to it, if they're adding it to the manifest, then the manifest digest changes and that breaks the core requirement that we have. Interesting, that makes sense. So part, and that's part of why we have all this distribution work we're doing is we wanna make sure that we can do this, re what I call reverse lookup. Um, registries are really good about creating Merkle trees and looking down, right? They can create a tree and there's lots of, you know, roots that go off. And we index, when I say we, the registry is index in that direction. There is no indexing that goes the reverse route for all intents and purposes. Um, there is some garbage collection indexing that's going to get done to make sure of that, but it's really a one directional kind of thing. Generally speaking, you can't go to a registry and say, what uses this layer, right? It's just, it, it, to some, there's some of that because of garbage collection, but it's, you also can't, uh, it, it's just not optimized in that way. Where, so what we want to do here is I do want to have an optimization. I want to say of the, um, of the 10 signatures, or in this case, three, of this artifact, well, actually, it's the other way. I take that back. I want to be able to come to, uh, it's easier if I just go to it. Hold on, let me just go to the slide that shows this. So here is, which one is this? Uh, Oh, okay, this is the signature, okay. So an image is uh, an artifact and it's the, you know, or the artifact itself is just the thing, it's in the registry and it's got a manifest and it's got layers. When you push a signature, you're actually pushing a signature that is referencing this artifact. The artifact doesn't actually know about it. So I pushed the first one by Wabbit Networks, I pushed the next one from Docker Hub and I pushed the last one by Acme Rockets. When I want to validate this, what I'm doing is I'm going to the registry and says, hey, by the way, can you give me all the signatures for the NetMonitor V1 image? Registries don't have a way conceptually to do this reverse lookup. So that's part of the first thing that we want to change. And if you take it Helm, it, it kind of takes this the same way. Like a Helm chart in theory should reference the images that it has in the registry. Today, a Helm chart is an opaque object and the registry doesn't actually know without cracking the Helm chart, which is something we want to avoid doing. There is no metadata that says this, but we'd like to be able to enable this. So basically the registries are a thing that reference another thing and it might be one-to-one. -one. So one, one, artif one manifest references one config. That's the one-to-one. -one. one manifest references multiple layers. That's fine. 
What I also want is multiple signatures to be able to reference a single artifact. So that's the many to one. So that's the evolution that we need to provide. And not only do use, is the signature something that need to point back, but we also want um, to be able to sign all these things. So granted, I'm not gonna sign a signature per se, but I do wanna have these things that point in multiple directions, each one of these artifacts be signed as well. So that's a, the key design goal. To some degree there still is, I mean, there, there already is an inherent many to one relationship where you can have multiple layers. You can have layers in different images that reference another, you know, stored layer that's, no? Am no, I understanding at least? No, you, you, you can share layers across manifest. There's a deduping process that most registries do. Um, but that's more of when the manifest is, when the layer is pushed up, we say, oh, we already have that in a scope that we feel is secure. So I always use the Coke and Pepsi scenarios and I haven't had a Coke and Pepsi come back and yell at me, so I'll continue to use those. Um, you know, if Coke pushes images into a registry, including the Ubuntu image, when Pepsi pushes it in, we actually don't share across customers because there are vectors where you can actually, you know, um, hack that shared layer and we don't want Coke to kind of screw up Pepsi or somebody else to screw up them both. So we actually don't dedupe across customers storage is not the highest cost and is concerned compared to security. So there is some of that deduping that happens, um, but it's not really the, the many to many lookup kind of thing. Okay, interesting. So um, there's other collection types, the, this is kind of, there, there's this interesting conversation, actually I might as well just do this because we have some different people here in the call. Um, CNAB is another interesting model. And so both Helm and CNAB have both done work based on what exists in registries today. What we're trying to figure out is the things that they're blocked on, what do we need to add to enable some more richer scenarios? So today a CNAB has an invocation image and that's how it, you know, it, it brings the environment to run whatever process installer it wants to do. Uh, and it can reference the WordPress you know, image itself externally. But what's interesting because they built this as we were building the OCR artifacts approach, um, the invocation image in CNAP actually has the Helm chart embedded in it. So it's not external. So if I have all of the Helm binaries or whatever else I need to run, if all I wanna do is add an updated Helm chart to do WordPress deployment, I actually have to rebuild this entire image, which has all kinds of security questions as well, because as a company, I might trust a base image that has Helm and Azure CLI or AWS CLI or whatever in it. Whenever I get an update for a new deployment, I don't wanna to have to revalidate what binaries are in that. I wanna say, I've already certified this thing that's got binaries. Now all I want is uh, a declarative piece of data that I can evaluate quickly and see there's no binaries in it, so it can't do me any harm. So that's the model that we really wanna be able to get to. So. The theory here is that if uh, a registry can store these multiple references that now the CNAB can have the invocation image as a, a single thing that I would sign and verify in my environment. I don't have to crack it ever again, but I can have a WordPress chart that is external from that. And then the chart could also declare what, not just embedded in the chart, but if it could actually declare to a registry, hey, here's the two images that I'm referencing or and whatever references. Because now what I can do is when I wanna move, well, one, when I wanna sign this from a register perspective, we actually can see the, the whole graph. But more importantly, if I wanna move content from one registry to another, I don't need to know all the details of what that particular thing is. I don't need to know it's a CNAP. I don't need to know it's a Helm. Think of it as you go to the file system today and you copy a directory from one machine from your from your computer and you want to put it on a USB drive or you want to put it in a cloud storage. You use the file system APIs to copy that. You don't use the PowerPoint AP, uh, file APIs. You don't use the Word you know file APIs or the you know my thing file APIs. There's a standard way to copy content from one storage system to another. That's the concept that we want to be able to provide in registries is I want to be able to say, I don't care what the artifact type is. There is a way to tell the registry file system, here's the graph of information I care about. 
So when you want to copy it from one place to another, replicate it from one place to another, move it into an air gap environment, delete it actually as well, that there's enough information that the registry doesn't need to know anything about the specific artifact type. So that's, that's our, our underlying goal here. So again, the collection types, like I'm kind of being repetitive and I missed part of what I was referring. So the point here is that we don't, I'm shifting this from collection types to being more reference types and we'll, we'll see kind of a little bit more of that come up. So um, the persistence is, persistent types are kind of interesting because what exactly is a signature? Is a signature a full-fledged artifact or is it, um, you know, additional metadata on a registry uh, artifact. So I, I kind of was playing with the idea <clears throat> that if I go to a registry and I want to see all the things that are in it, what is it that I want to see? And you know, if you look at you know, the Mac file system was kind of known for this. Of they had all these additional things you could embed into a file, both good and bad. Um, but you didn't see that. You only saw the one file. Where in Windows, you would see a, you know, binaries and just a, a huge foray of information that really was much more detailed than you really needed to see. So here I've got a whole bunch of, um, this is the repositories blade. This is all the things that the tagged, sorry, these are the repos that are in this registry. So there are you know, lots of tags under each one of these. And this was just the, hey, what does a 256 character limit look like for a repo? So that was just an interesting one. If I look at a particular repo like Hello World, I can see the individual tags that I push to it. And then there's metadata on each tag and so forth. But this is the kind of thing that I think that I'm really most interested in. I, I don't want to see, I, I, I want to see the tags, the individual artifacts. I don't know if I really want to see the different artifacts being the signature. And is it really just an individual signature? No, it's the Acme, Rogers, Acme Rocket signature, the Wabbit's network signature. Then there is, you know, a, a tag for the artifact, and I'm repeating that again. Like this is not, this is the Windows way of doing things. Is the is my little self joke. Um, what I really want to see, and if I can put an annotation on what this thing is, like great, I can see that this is an image, and these are signatures. I don't really know that these things are related. I, I just did an arbitrary PowerPoint pasting of ordering here. There's just this information. This is a signature, but what is the signature of? So if I shift this around, what I really want is the artifacts in a registry. In this case, they are container images. I want to know that they're signed. I want to kind of change the pivot. And in fact, I don't even want a tag on a signature. I really want to know that this artifact is signed. Likewise, I might want to say that an SBOM is part of this artifact. I don't know if I really even want to see an SBOM as a unique row here. I want to say that there is an SBOM for this artifact. And likewise, additional metadata. What is the Git digest of this thing? Who pushed it? Who pulled it? How many are there? How many polls are there, rather? Sorry, I, I went fast on that. So the, the idea is that we want to basically change the, basically kind of give some hierarchy to the artifacts that are pushed to a registry of different types and how they're related to each other. Make sense? So the signatures wouldn't necessarily be seen um, in, in OCI and in, uh, I guess in the image repositories or more just be meta somehow attached to the image that yeah. is relevant to. That's the idea. Okay. I mean, obviously, depending on the tools, it's like, what is the mainline scenario that you're trying to do? Do you really want to think, yes, of course you can get signatures out. But is a signature by itself interesting as opposed to, no, a signature is actually on something. How do you think about it that way? Um, and more importantly, it's not just signatures, it's all these things. Like we're not trying to build a signature only solution. We're trying to enhance a registry to support things, including signing. So that's kind of, I purposely wanted to take real durable artifacts that I really want to interact with as first party, first, uh, first concept kind of things, like an image or a home chart. And then I want to say, what are the other things that I would do to that? Well, I can sign it. I could put an S bomb, or I can just put a set of metadata on it. So we're just trying to break these things down a little bit more that there's artifacts, there's metadata, you know, and the what, and, and I want to give Derek credit for this. Um, he was kind of pushing on why we keep on putting more stuffing more stuff into image manifest and image index, which we could. In fact, we probably do want to put a media type on index. It probably is helpful. Um, 
but every time we have these conversations, we're basically debating with the container image folks that are trying to build an actual image and trying to iterate there. There's this OCI V2 thing, which is a generic term, but it's really, they were focused on how to do a V2 of images. So how would we um, make this more, you know, flexible for what we want to do in artifacts that aren't, like container images are a type of artifact. So rather than trying to jam more in here, what we're really saying is maybe we just need another media, uh, another manifest schema. And here, for one, we can change from layers to blobs. We talked about that, but maybe it's actually just references. Uh, in fact, let me just get something. I don't know if I have it here, I'll find it. So, uh, and I, I've had gone back and forth with two collections versus one collection, but let's just say there's a ref. So now we can let the image spec continue to use those two media types, but we could allow Helm, Singularity, Wasm, uh, CNAB, you know, OPA, and all these others to say, look, I don't have to, you know, weirdly fit into these two manifests because the registry spec doesn't specify you shall only support two manifests. It says it supports manifests. Just so how the image spec defines these two, a registry could have another one as well. What we'd like to avoid though is having a specific manifest for CNAB, a different one for Helm, a different for Singularity. Because as registries, we have to put in manifest processing because that's how we do our garbage collection and indexing and that whole listing. So we really want to hopefully get one more and get it right. Um, and then enable a larger ecosystem. I have the next slide. Oh, I see where I was going. Questions on that before I go to the next monster slide? So in that you would still have the signature or the, the other metadata, relevant metadata as a separate image. It would just be that using the artifact manifest, you wouldn't have to worry about the many to one, like about having the reverse tracks, but instead you could make uh, make it very exactly. guess, obvious. Exactly. Okay. And that artifact manifest, I guess, wouldn't uh, be incorporated in the um, in the image ID or, or in the SHA because in otherwise, right? Because otherwise you can't, I, if you change it, then that would change the image ID. Exactly, exactly. So let me try this next slide. Um, I haven't finished it yet, but so we'll, we'll see how the story goes. Uh, so you have two images you push into a registry and then you have the Helm chart that I did the dotted line here because a Helm chart technically does not reference from a registry perspective. The registry has no idea that it's referencing these two images. We don't crack open Helm charts. We just say, hey, there's this blob that has got a media type of Helm that's all registries really care about. So I don't really get the benefits of being able to help make that copy, right? That USB copy thing we talked about. But if we look at the way these things would work is each one of these things would have a signature. Um, and notice the signature points back to the artifact. And those are a, an artifact of their own that points to an artifact. If I look at the way registries store this information, they, and this, I kind of did this in a little bit of a minimized uh, ordering. So when you push an image, Excuse me. The first thing that you, we do is, or the, the tooling does, is it pushes the blobs. So it pushes blobs to the registry, does some puts, does the Debian input, does the WordPress uh, image layer put, and then it'll come back and post a manifest. And the manifest, um, there's validation on the manifest that says, hey, by the way, this manifest references these two blobs. Yes, they are in the registry. Life is good. Um, put complete. And then you can also apply a tag. And the tag is interesting because the tag actually does point back, but tags are a kind of a nebulous things that are in registries There actually isn't much definition of the spec because this is part of very much of the implementation detail. But there is a little bit of this, like it can look at a tag and it can see what it references and then the manifest does the, the directional piece. And then the signature is the same thing, right? The signature, I push the blob, I, I realize my animations in backwards. Uh, I push the, the blob of the signature and then there's a manifest that says, hey, this manifest points at this WordPress chart. That's the, the current prototype that we've got going. And then we just repeat the same thing for the MySQL image. And you know, just it's very repetitive here, but you kind of get the idea. This is, this is how registries store massive amounts of information. I haven't even called out the Debian image is actually several layers and the MySQL is several layers and so on and so forth. 
So I'll take all the noise out of the way. But now when I push the WordPress chart, what I want to be able to do, what I do today is it pushes the chart as a blob. And then it pushes a manifest that says, by the way, this blob is a, a, a WordPress chart and it's got the config media type to help you figure it out. And, and there is a tag for that as well. It's this link across the top. What we really want to be able to do to support that file copy scenario is we want to kind of, we want the Helm chart to tell the registry, by the way, I'm referencing these two images that you possibly have in the registry already. And notice they're not referencing the layers. That's a detail that the WordPress chart shouldn't have to worry about. The WordPress chart should say, I'm referencing these tags, which are rep points to digest. So actually it's interesting. I pointed to write the manifest. So it, it could point at the digest. I don't like pointing at digest because digests give you no flexibility. There's no break glass scenario. It's great that it, it's locked and you don't have any drift uh, if you want to reference a particular WordPress. A chart, but if the MySQL image has a security update, I can't just ship the MySQL security update as an updated tag. I have to actually change the chart if the chart's referencing a digest. So we believe the right philosophy here is it references tags and tags can be locked. Um, and that's really a, a, a registry and a customer choice. So now a WordPress chart can be published and as MySQL revs their security updates or the WordPress revs their security updates, they're doing the proper discipline on tags and not just digest. And now I get a balance of security and usability. I have a question about that one, about the locking tags. So who does the locking of the tags? Like what's the what's the mechanism there? Unfortunately today, the customer has, a, has to do it because uh, most registries have the feature as individual registry features. There's no OCI standard for tag locking. All right, so if anyone sort of like, you know, in the case of something going wrong, that's kind of not a guaranteed thing that the locks tag. Well, it depends on what you're trying to do. All right, if you're, and this is part of what we're trying to round out with the signature scenario. So the, the, op, the big open vector is if there's no signatures, then if I update the MySQL image with the MySQL evil image, there's no way to know because evil company doesn't need to do anything other than have the ability to push to the registry which in itself is not a, is a pretty high bar to be fair. Um, but if there's now a signature on that as well, that it is the MySQL image signature, then you've got that, at least that second line of defense, if not third. So the, the idea is that not only should there should be a signature, um, but the tag can be locked as well this way that you shouldn't be able, well, to be fair, you have to be careful where you're trying to lock the tag because you, this goes into the whole gated import thing. And this is the balance between public registries and private registries. So where I get the WordPress chart as a public chart, it, in fact, the way these charts are published today, the charts are published in one registry and they reference images in another registry. So charts come out of helm.sh or various other locations and they reference images that are in Docker Hub or Quay or what, and eventually GitHub probably as well. So they're already kind of syndicated across different locations, which is kind of weird. What we really want to be able to do is, and that's part of what the OCI artifacts supports, is I don't have to have Helm charts stored in one place that knows how to store Helm charts and references another place that knows how to store images. Registries can store all these things. So now they can be all kept together. So that's, that's really what the main goal is about. And if you have that, now I have the ability, again, to reference the tags, and the, if they come from, let's just say, we'll just use Docker Hub and let's say you know, Docker Hub can eventually support uh, Helm charts being pushed to it as well. Now, when I reference those, I can reference the Helm chart, I can refer which references the SQL image that references a tag and that's all signed and I feel really good about it because Helm, the Helm chart is not, the WordPress Helm chart is not owned by MySQL, the, my SQL team can push security updates to that. And as long as it's still signed, then the Helm chart is fine. It's referencing the particular digest. As I bring it into my environment, the Acme Rocket scenario, then I can validate that A, those things work for me in my environment. You know, maybe my SQL did a change to something that breaks my, breaks my logging system. And now I can't see any of the, the SQL diagnostics logs. I want to catch that before it gets deployed. So I'll bring that in, I'll validate the MySQL image is signed by MySQL or Helm, whoever's signing it. 
um, I'll test it and I'll then put another signature on it for Acme Rockets in my environment and then I'll deploy it to my environment. And you know, vulnerability scans or whatever else you want to do as well. Does that your does that answer your question, Marina? Um, yeah, I think so. Okay. It's it, it's nuanced because it's not just any one part. That's the, kind of the detail here. Is tag locking gives you the ability to not let somebody else go update it. But what happens when you do want to update it? So MySQL does want to update their images for security. So you don't really don't want Docker Hub up tag locking it. The real tag locking scenario is more in a, in a personal, not personal, but a, a corporate environment or customer environment. I don't want to label all customer environments corporate. Um, you know, I'll pick on David and Andy because they're first in my list. David and Andy are the developers on the team. You know, they want to be able to push images. Uh, we want them to be able to push images. But uh, Ian's our security guy. And he doesn't want anybody to be updating anything existing. So he's going to put a, a flag on the registry that you can't push uh, new content to existing tags in that environment. Um, this way he knows that everything's immutable and everything that gets deployed is unique. And if you really want to do a security update, you should do a new deployment um, for tag one, two, three, five. Uh, and that's the Stromo way. Ian, because he's also the security person, realizes that one, two, three, one actually has a security patch problem. And for some reason they can't do a deployment. So he can break glass patch that image, update that tag, and now have all the nodes that for some reason he can't do a, an updated deployment. He could at least do an update in place, not an update in place per se, but he can basically tell the node to rotate and it'll pull the same image because it's referencing that tag, and but he'll get updated content. I just don't get the when a deployment wouldn't be possible, but it could just be I'm not thinking of, you know. A it's not a deployment could be possible. It's there, there are scenarios where the deployment definition was is fixed by somebody that they don't have access to, and we've seen this in more surprising scenarios than you can imagine. I mean, look, even in apps, even in Azure, app service doesn't have a way to float tags. You you have to either change the app service deployment or update the existing tag, and then tell app service, "Hey, that tag you're referencing, pull it again," because I changed it. Yeah. So it, it's actually set up as an anti-pattern. To be fair. So the only way that would work is if you're referencing it as a tag, because now I can update tags. If it was referenced as a digest, there's nothing they can do. So, but, so if it's, could you not change that digest? If Because you know, it, in, the, in the hopefully rare situation where you have to update the tag, you could just also update this one other field, right? Or is it more complicated? Well, that's what I'm getting at is I'm using, I'm throwing rocks at our own app service team, but it could be I have a Helm chart that I can't change for whatever, because it's owned by another team. Um, how do you get an update rolled out when you don't own all of the layers that, th that things get defined? And because digests are fixed, they are uh, computed, you know, for, for you know, computed, you can't push new content to the same digest. And if I can't change the deployment definition, then I have no way to, to get through that. In yeah, fact, the perfect example there is that WordPress chart. We have thousands of people deploying WordPress charts that are not updating the image references. So we're doing all this great work to make sure that they're not pulling content from Docker Hub for their own images and they bring copies into their own registry and they own them and they deploy them so they're not limited by throttles or more importantly, the failures of the internet connectivity. That's really the bigger problem. Yeah. But yeah, they do a deploy, they do a Helm chart deploy and what does the Helm chart do? It deploys Nginx from Docker Hub or Quay or GCR. Mm -hmm. I guess my big concern is just that you lose some of the security properties of, of the references if you're referencing the tag and not an immutable digest of the object itself. Um, and I, guess this would add, I guess this would add some overhead to if the tags ever needed to change, but I just don't see why you couldn't, this couldn't just be one other step for this break glass scenario is, okay, you update the tag and you update this, you know, the references, and then you've updated the, you know, the situation. So take the Helm chart example. Let's say Nginx has a new update. Nginx puts a security update out, but everybody's using their Helm charts to deploy it. Who, the Nginx went and did the update. Who's doing the update to the chart that everybody's deploying? Because in your, what you're suggesting, is, and this does happen, is the Helm chart references the digest now. Mm -hmm. Now I have to go find the Helm community owner that owns that Helm chart and update that as well. 
So it's it's an additional step, even if I have control over it. Okay, but it's an additional step that really makes the Helm chart immutable. So like an attacker couldn't um, say change the tag and make the Helm chart um, invalid or- But know. how would they change it? What, what is it that they're changing? Well, so if, if someone were to somehow compromise the registry or something else and point this tag to the wrong digest. How would they do um, that? Well, if they if they had a, if they were compromising it, so like this wouldn't be like a normal situation. This would be if an attacker got into the system, um, but you would lose kind of the properties of saying, okay, this has been additionally verified by this third party, but this third party, you know, can't prove that they verified this actual object. I feel like you just lose the. the well, we we that. say this, but I actually don't understand the flow because what we're saying is the Helm chart is referencing a digest to another registry. That's fine, but what, or and actually the digest isn't tied to specific registries, tied to a specific reference. The, actually it is tied to a registry, which is part of what we're trying to change because it's got the, the registry reference in it as well. So they have to actually break that registry. If they break that registry, fine. Then, you know, if they're referencing a tag, then they could have updated it. But if it's, if we also have the signing, the notary signature on it, they would also have to have the key that signed the Nginx image. So what we're already doing is with the notary v2 work, what we're saying is- that, that, that signature references the digest though, right? The signature, the signature references the digest of the my, we'll keep on using the MySQL image in this case. So if the Helm chart, this WordPress Helm chart is referencing this MySQL image and if it references it by tag, then when it's pulled, even I have the ability for the MySQL team to update the MySQL image. But because we're doing signature validation, the chart references a tag. So now I have the floating, the ability to float to a new security update. My double check is that the signature on the MySQL image is signed by the MySQL org. Okay, so I guess it just depends on their level of um like what their threat model is, what they're worried about, that kind of thing. Because I feel like in, in most cases that probably should be enough, the signature plus the the tag, but like maybe do they, they still have the option to, re to reference the digest, right? If they, for some reason, wanted an extra level of of, of guarantee. But, but that's my point. I, I think by providing an extra level of guarantee, you actually lock them in, you lock them out from being able to do security updates. So you've locked them to, it's almost the definition of what you've been, your team has been referring to as the rollback scenario is you're blocking me from being able to roll forward. Yeah, I guess, yeah, especially if people can't do that release, I guess that's the, that's, that's the question, yeah. Because the big picture that we're, is happening here is there's no one entity that owns all of this. This is just a scattered ecosystem of people trying to contribute uh, collectively. Yeah. The Helm chart owners don't own many of the images. In fact, a lot of these Helm charts don't even have constant maintainers, which is a different problem. Okay, but they, you know, they, they trust whoever pushed the tag to maintain it correctly and not like, you know. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of challenges there. I, yeah. I won't go into the detail there. But the point is that so what we're trying to do is provide secure with rollback and roll forward, you know, capabilities. So if the, if the signature is verified, is, you know, and you can have multiple signatures, that's also why we want to have multiple signatures, uh, that I could also say, you know, back into our, you know, all the way up to, okay, sometimes it goes fast. In this case, I might say that my deployment doesn't just depend on Acme Rockets. It might say I also want to take a validation on the software vendors I uh, choose from. So in this case, it might say I have to have from Acme Rockets and Wabbit Networks. I may not care about Docker Hub in this case because Docker Hub is more of an aggregator, just putting a stamp on it. And it's a good stamp, but I might want to say that, you know, um, I care about the originating author, their signature, and yep. my company's validation signature. Those are the, the double checksums that I could put in place. Yeah, so I guess then if someone wanted to change the tag and you had all those checksums in place, you could check, you, both of those signers would have to agree up to this right. tag change, which then gives you that, that guarantee. That, that kind of answers the question. Because I feel like, you know, if someone, even if they just messed up on a tag push, they could um, break a lot of images, yeah. with any attacker involved. Um, but I guess that's that kind of situation with the additional signatures would also kind of deal with that. 
Yeah, I mean, that's a perfect point. Is this is exactly why we feel the gated workflow is the, is the best security model because most failures start from well-intended situations, right? It's, there's very, very few of the things that break workloads are actually malicious. Most of them are the flawed humans in the system and the computers just do what the flawed humans tell them to do. So, all right, so uh, let me get back to this other slide here. So what, um, all right, so now we've, we've pushed it to, we've repeated what a, what a Docker image has pushed and we got the Helm chart that's in. So now what we wanna do is we wanna say this Helm chart is referencing those manifests, not the layers, that's really up to the manifest to decide, you know, it's up to those image authors. Where was I going with this? Oh, I guess that was it. Okay, that was the conversation. So the, the idea is that if the Helm chart can actually, if the registry can know what the Helm chart's pointing at, then there's a bunch of enablers that happen. Uh, like I said, it's the copy scenario. Um, it's also the uh, security scenarios that we can see the graph of what's being secured. So a vulnerability scanner can now look at this and go like, oh, this thing's referencing this other thing. That, that it turns out we have uh, a Debian layer that's bad. I can now see not only the other images that reference it, that same that same Debian image, but I also could see the Helm charts that are impacted by that as well. Um, because often the challenge is the, sec the security issue is not other vulnerabilities. There's always vulnerabilities. There's always flawed humans. Uh, the question is, what is the blast radius of that vulnerability? And if I know where that image is being referenced and being used and being deployed, now I have meaningful, actionable information that I could do about it. So having this graph is, is really important to us. And then it's just, I filled in the rest of them there. Um, so if I, let me find, I have a, a mock of what I've been thinking about for the, Sorry, let me just find it. I wasn't pre as prepared. Um, where do I have mock of the graph? Let's see, I get my that out of the way. I think it was here. Okay, so here's a very early thing that we've kind of been thinking about. Um, so I was originally going with a flat list of references. So this is a completely new schema. Imagine this is the artifact schema. Uh, so in fact, it's of a media type artifact collection. So it's not image index, whoops. It's not uh, image manifest, it is artifact collection. That's the new third uh, manifest type that we're suggesting would give this generic use. We were playing with putting the config in the references, but it's a one-to-one, -one, so we left it here. Uh, so Azure's got uh, ARM templates, Azure, Azure Resource Manager templates. There's a new thing called BICEP that they've been experimenting with. Um, so the idea is that this thing is uh, a BICEP template and uh, the layers here have nothing to do with BICEP. I was copy pasting, so ignore that. So the idea here uh, is, uh, this is not a great example, so um, I'll switch to another example, but the, the mixture is it could have actual layers. So you see three layers here that are referenced. And I can also reference a Helm chart. So I can intermix the layer, the blobs, the references to be a manifest, that collection at the top, but I could also reference other things as well. I might want to reference layers directly. I might want to reference config objects. I might want to have a soft reference to something. So let's see if this was the more... Uh, which one I had that was better. Let's use this one. So um, in what the later one is, we're trying to figure out the hard references and soft references. And the hard references are more a matter of, you know, this is what it takes to actually make this up. A, a, a Docker image makes no sense unless it has layers, right? There's, there's definitely, you have to have some layers for a manifest to be useful. Uh, a Helm chart might reference, it has to have the, uh, where do I have it here? Yeah, so, and I've also broken this out. This is not the way Helm charts actually work, but it's a conceptual way. 
So here, this is a Helm chart, the Helm JSON for this manifest. Notice it's still an artifact collection, but, and I've actually, since we're now have a new schema, instead of trying to put it into the config and having to read this, I've actually surfaced an actual artifact type. So let's just say this is uh, you know, the extension, the file extension, as you would see on disk, and say this is a Helm chart. Here's the Helm config object if they want to have that. But now I have a blob that actually is the actual Helm chart. There's the digest, there's the sots. I have a separate blob that is the Helm values file because I might want to have you know, 50 Helm charts that are only differentiated by the values file. So I have a way to dedupe these if I wanted. Again, here's the blob, the digest, and the size. That's because it's a physical reference. This thing, when it, this Helm chart is deleted, it will delete these uh, layers and the config object. Um, reference counting aside for uh, any other Helm charts the reference these as well. However, when it's referencing the WordPress chart, and notice I've kind of just stuffed something here, it says WordPress 5.7. Um, this is saying it's an image manifest. And here's the other image manifest. There's no digest, there's no size, because this is kind of a soft reference to it. And this is modeled a little bit after Python, where yeah, if you look at like Node and NPM and, and some of the uh, and NuGet, they actually have references that are stored inside the same package manager registry. But Python is kind of interesting is that it has, it makes a reference, but it doesn't actually force it to be there. Um, it assumes that you're going to get it. You could possibly get it from the same registry, but you might get it from somewhere else. I might get the WordPress chart, sorry, the WordPress image from a different registry. It might actually already be on the node. So I want to say that this chart references this, but I don't have it as a hard reference to say that it must be in this registry. In fact, when I delete this chart, I don't want to delete the WordPress chart. Sorry, when I delete this chart, I don't want to delete the WordPress image, right? So, but if I delete the WordPress image, it might be interesting to know who's referencing it in here so I can maybe generate a warning on delete to you know, let the user decide, do I really want to delete that thing because it's referenced by other things in the registry? And then of course, there's just the, the collection of annotations that you could have on things. So this is like a couple of hours worth of work of just trying to figure out how do we make sense of the, uh, the scenarios that we were kind of put in the PowerPoints of how we want to try to track these things. And then the idea here is that if this was a signature, and I don't think I actually have a real signature here that I've taken time to finish it. Um, let me look real quick. Yeah, so here's here's the, uh, the, and so this one should actually possibly not have this information. I'll delete it for a second. In this case, the signature, the notary v2 signature is from Wabbit Networks. And here's the actual blob for the signature and it references this in image. That's kind of the reverse pointer. Um, but like I said, you've noticed that it says references and it's not separate collections yet. So this is just a, you're starting to see how a signature can get put in as well. So I'm gonna stop talking for a minute and let people digest that and get questions. I was waiting for your uh, kid there, David, to pop in. Uh, she's she, she's here, don't worry. <laughs> she's just hopefully occupied by a YouTube video on my lap. <laughs> Sometimes. My, uh, yeah, that's uh, the benefits and the challenges of working at home. Yes, super cute. So um, to put some, so what would, sorry, go ahead. So you don't have any, Oh, this is a signature. This 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 isn't what a signature object would look like. Not yet. It'll it'll in the current the second hour of conversations. It would probably the reference would be more here. The blob of the signature would be here, and it would point to the artifact it's signing here. Um, in this case, we probably do want the digest of it. I, well, I, well, that's the part we're trying to figure out. Actually, no. The signature does need the digest. I take that back. So that's a good example where I need to evolve this a little bit more. Because you do want to say it's not, you're not, we're not doing tag signing. So signatures actually do sign digests.
to be very clear. So back, and that kind of helps with Marina's uh, conversation is while we want the Helm chart to have a, a, a semi-loose coupling to the image it references so that we can update the MySQL image with a security fix, we don't want the signature to float. The signatures are absolutely pinned to digest. Those, the, the correlation between the signature and the thing it's signed are immutable. So that's, that's a good point to clarify, Marina. I hadn't thought about that. That makes sense, thanks. And then the big challenge is for Ian and Niaz and their working groups to figure out where's the key management fit in all of this. So that's a big piece of this next. Questions? Heading in the right direction? Kind of confused? Doesn't make sense? I don't want to take quiet as being an endorsement. <laughs> so looking good from my point of view. Thank you. It's really cool the way this kind of fits in with the the registry scheme. I still think I still have a couple of like, you know, larger questions about finding tag, finding signatures and um, making sure you have, you know, the right signatures on the right object and that kind of thing. But I think in general, the format wise, I think it, it makes sense about, you know, a way to get this stuff onto the registry and reference each other and, and all that. So yeah, pretty cool. cool. Yeah, I'm definitely seeing I've, it as the right direction compared to where we were at and what we were looking at before with V1. This is definitely headed down the path that we wanted to see. Yeah, you know, like this is the, the critical point here is like these, the whole movement is really important, like from the MCR to a customer or into air gapped environments, whether it be physical clouds that are air gapped or even just network air gapped environments. This is the pieces that we need to figure out how to reference these things. And then obviously, you know, the keys need to figure out how to flow with these as well as the next. That's next right. Challenge. Cool. I also appreciate this is helpful for me to kind of contextualize where uh, I guess the build tax <laughs> project saw that it would be helpful. Like it will be, uh, it's going to be, we would have to slot it in a few places, both, I guess, uh, when producing images and when accepting images, but it could be uh, very valuable to, uh, to do that. Cool. All right. Um, with that, I will call it the weekly meeting. Turn, hopefully this was helpful for folks and we'll get the recording up. Um, and uh, as far as next, I'm taking off the next three weeks. Um, so uh, I don't if, know if Niaz or anybody was able to get some stuff done uh, that he wanted to report in the next couple of weeks. I, I just wanted to re reiterate, we are making good progress. It, it is a little slower than we would like. I'm not blaming COVID in this case. It's, we're just at a point of year for our planning uh, for the next next portion of the year. So that's thrown a wrench in my time schedules. But I do feel good about the planning that we're doing. And just it's how important is it? We have, as Ian will you know, mention it, we have critical dependencies on this in Azure. So we obviously need to do it. And it has to work across different registries. So I feel good about our commitment to making sure we will deliver this in time. Uh, and not just some here's some interesting side project we'd like to do, you know, just out of our board time sitting at home with COVID. Uh, so what we do need to figure out how to do the distribution part. So that's why you're seeing more progress happen there. But I'm hoping that we'll get um, uh, the OPA folks to be able to help us validate, do we have the right components in deployment? And, and Marina, I'm sure you'll have a bunch of questions there of, with how we're actually testing some of this stuff that will surface some interesting questions. Yeah, looking forward to hearing about that. You said we will deliver this in time. What is the expected time? I don't know, it's whatever. Uh, we, to be fair, I would probably say by next summer, I would hope by first quarter, we'll have something that we can prototype that we feel comfortable enough that even we would roll out in ACR uh, in various regions. Um, we're at a point now where you can take the prototype and stand up your own registry. Like we happen to run one in Azure websites, but it's not at all scalable. It's, it's based on Docker distribution, right? So, um, I would hope that we feel stable enough to ask the cloud provider that the cloud providers would be willing to roll out the code and the, the design patterns that we're talking about in their production registries by first quarter of next year. I'm hoping we'll be at that kind of stable place. 
and the spec will evolve and probably by summer we could probably be taking customer production workloads on by next summer um, that would be kind of an aspirational goal is what i would say cool it's kind of quicker than i thought you might say <laughs> good so i can over under promise over deliver mm -hmm. um, or something like that i'm not quite sure i did the opposite there so anyway i do have to run to another call um thanks again for everybody joining and david your daughter's absolutely oh. adorable yeah she is thank you for that see ya congratulations good to get the connection bye